Okay, can I um, start by saying that obviously I'm delighted that the Executive has endorsed a direction of travel for how we're going to transform health and social care. We had a very constructive meeting this morning where we talked out the need for transformation. The direction of travel has very much been informed by the expert panel's work and we're delighted that Professor Bengoa is with us here today and very much highlighted the need for major transformational change. And I think that we all understand and I think we can all share the concerns that we have what Professor Bengoa described as a burning platform in health and social care. We need to transform how we deliver services and we have to focus on delivering better outcomes for individuals. So that's really what the direction of travel is about. It's about delivering better outcomes. It's about tackling health inequalities. It's about being serious about collaboration and working in partnership with all those who use our service and all the staff that actually provide the service. So I think it's a really good news day for the health service, for health and social care in general. It's a fresh start for health. And we're going to build on all the positive work that's been done over the last number of years. And I think what we set out today is very clearly a direction of travel, which is going to lead to tremendous benefits for all of the population. Okay, just um, <clears throat> two words for me. There's something uh, very special happening here when I look at it in international European terms. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, first and foremost formal political support for a very complex transformation. Uh, and without that, it's very difficult to pull it off. That is beginning to happen here, and I can't see it happening almost anywhere else in Europe. That is very powerful. If we add to that the ideas that are contained in the minister's 10-year uh, uh, view, uh, I think um, we're beginning to have the right conditions for Northern Ireland to be first class uh, uh, in Europe, definitely, and worldwide. Well, thank you very much, Professor Bangoa and uh, Michelle. Uh, we're very excited about the possibilities that there are uh, in relation to the change that is coming. And we had a, a very clear choice to make. Uh, we either try and manage uh, the change or we either manage the chaos that would come if we didn't tackle the huge issues that there are. And uh, they always say uh, the first thing to do is to recognise that there is a difficulty. We have recognised that as an executive. Uh, we, as you know, are becoming very much an outcomes-focused uh, executive, and that means that there will be collaboration right across the executive, and I want to assure everybody here today that the entire executive have brought, uh, bought into this 10-year strategy. Uh, it is a 10-year strategy because we know that there are no quick fixes in terms of this huge issue of our health and social care system. But as Professor Bengoa has said, we believe that we can make the change and we can make the change that will benefit everybody in Northern Ireland. Well, uh, first of all, can I too say thank you to uh, Professor Bengoa. I suppose in many ways today is Bengoa Day mm -hmm. here in the North. But this is all about leadership, folks. And as far as we are concerned, we are absolutely determined to provide leadership. So there will be a big test of political leaders in the time ahead. There's going to be huge change within our health service, which will be massively to the benefit of uh, the staff who work there and patients. And the question is, as the First Minister has said, will or not that change take place in a planned, controlled way, or do we end up in chaos? Well, we've opted for a planned, controlled approach. And it's quite clear that at the heart of all of this, is ensuring that we uh, empower staff to work in the health service and that we continue to direct our financial resources where they can be most effective for people's health. So I think it's been a very good day for the executive. The executive is totally and absolutely united behind uh, the health minister. And, and I think that this certainly represents a, a fresh start for our, for our health service here in the north. Uh, when will we get further details about costings and can you as health minister give a guarantee that hospitals won't close? The debate today, Stephen, is not about hospitals. It's very much about how we can deliver better health care for all those that need it. So the debate today is very much focused on what needs to change. So what we need to do more of, invest in primary care. We've announced additional GP places, additional nurse places. 
We've announced a named health visitor, district nurse and social worker to work with every GP practice. That shows there's a real meaningful commitment to work and deliver in primary care. So for me, the de debate has to be around better outcomes. Professor Bengoa in his report on the expert panel very much focused on systems, not on structures. And I think that's really, really important. I think people are, want first-class healthcare. They deserve first-class healthcare. I believe the plan that we have put out very much um, will lead us to that path. I think in terms of costings and going forward, this is a 10-year plan. And it's going to evolve over time because we've very clearly set out our stall in relation to want to work in collaboration. We're going to design services with staff. We're going to design services with patients. So in order to do that, we need to go through that process. And then obviously costings will come in time. But for the first year of work, I've already committed to what I'm going to do. I've set out a number of key actions, which shows meaningful difference from day one. Because this is the start of a new process. This is the start of a better health service. And this is the start of a reformed health service. The executive have to go through our budget processes, and we're all committed to doing that. We all very much recognise that transformation costs money. But this debate is not about money. This debate is about people, it's about staff, and it's about us supporting them collectively. Tracy? You say that this debate is about money, but certainly if you're going to transform a healthcare system, there's going to be an upfront cost. Can the executive commit to spend the money it needs to spend if it's going to have the right start? Well, the executive have very clearly committed to this plan of action. So we very clearly recognise that we need to do things differently. We need to transform services. We need to tackle waiting lists. In order to do all that, it's going to cost money. So obviously we have to, as an executive, have those conversations. We're about in, in the discussions in relation to the budget. And all that will, be for, will form part of that discussion. But it's very clear that if we want to transform the service, it is going to cost us money. But there's a recognition here for that. Is it going to be difficult? Absolutely. But we're committed to fighting, the direct, to fighting and supporting this direction of travel, which we all recognise needs to happen. <coughs> Yeah. Uh, Minister, the report is essentially a lot of, it's aspirational in nature. Can you explain to the public and people who maybe are dealing with uh, issues with the health service now in the present, the lack of definitive targets and goals within this? Well, I don't agree with you that it's aspirational in nature. I think it very clearly sets out a direction of travel. There's no big bang here in relation to the health service. We didn't arrive at this position overnight. This has been an incremental change over years. And I think that in order to fix it, we're going to have to also come at it from that approach. So what the, the plan is, is that there's a 10 year plan. It's very clearly set out. But it's really, really focusing on collaboration, on working in partnership with staff, supporting staff to be innovative because they're crying out for it. They're asking us to support them to do more of what they do well. So I think very clearly there's a number of key actions which are going to happen from day one, particularly in relation to how we're going to consult on criteria, increasing GPs, increasing nurses, increasing the team of multidisciplinary actions. I think that there's quite a number of actions which are meaningful and going to make a difference, I think, from day one. But the longer picture here is a period of transformation. It's about managed change and it's about better outcomes for all those people who need the health service. Chris, you said it's aspirational, um, practical rather than aspirational. Take us through waiting lists. Uh, so waiting lists you say you're going to address. So from January 2017, how are you going to cut waiting lists and what will we see them cut by year by year? Well, I'm clearly, what I've said in the documents, that I'm going to set out a plan for how we tackle waiting lists. I think that in order to transform the system, Professor Bengoa talks about the need to build confidence in the system. In order to do that, you need to bring down the waiting lists. So I'm very committed to doing that. I think what we have at this moment in time is unacceptable waiting lists. We all agree with that. So my plan of action, we've done a large body of work, which has been a combination of a number of factors. One, making sure we're up to full capacity within the health service. And two, relying on the independent sector to also provide some of those services. So I think the short term, medium term, but the longer term picture here, waiting lists are only going to get worse if we don't transform the system. So in the immediate term, if you let me finish, in the immediate term, what we're going to do is publish a plan in January, which will very clearly set out how year on year we're going to bring down those waiting lists and deal with the backlog that's there at the minute. So, so just set that out though, does that mean more money? And if so, how much funding? And what would we see them cut by year by year? Well, obviously, that's part of the plan which we're developing, but it will take more money, absolutely. If we're going to be able to deal with patients and make sure they're seen in a timely manner, then we're going to have to invest in actually doing that in the short term. But again, I bring you back to the longer term picture. The system will get worse. We'll be managing crisis after crisis if we don't transform the system. So alongside dealing with waiting lists and making sure people are seen appropriately and seen in a timely manner and bringing those waiting lists down, we have to be serious about driving on the transformation.